Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Um, thank you to all the new subscribers. We really appreciate it. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. We'd appreciate that. Yes. Um, and today, we're taking you inside the world of video games. Voice director and casting director of Blizzard Entertainment, Andrea Toyas. Let's, Let's get, get buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Guys, our guest is the respected voice director and casting director of Blizzard Entertainment, responsible for epic titles like World of Warcraft, Diablo, and Overwatch. <laughs> we love her. We're so psyched she's here, and we are getting buzzed with the amazing Andrea Toyas. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Welcome. It's so good to have Thank you here. Thank you. So finally. happy to be here. This is really a huge honor. I've been watching all your shows, so it's kind of cool Thank to be in the you. castle. Thank Man. you. We just yes. have to take a moment and just take in. <laughs> Absolutely. Because you know we like good accessories. Right. And well, such. first of all, you are um, the busiest person yes. on planet Earth. Yes. yes. Period. We know that you had to move the heavens <laughs> to be here today. Yes, so thank um, you. So we so appreciate you I'm coming so down honored. and sharing with all yeah. of us. We're so yeah. excited. And it's kind of perfect because you're kind of the culmination uh, of this sort of Overwatch extravaganza we've been having. Right, right. And everyone in the cast has talked about you, and I mean, we all love you that are in the industry, and you're like, you're like the actor's favorite uh, director. Well, A, they so. said it to everybody, but B, ah! but B, thank you. <laughs> I think any of us are in this industry, we're all, we all love each other. It's yes. a very positive kind of thing. Yes. So, but, but I thank you for saying that. Yes. So cool, man. Um, we're going to get to it. we got right, some Jeff. questions for you. Hit it. Um, so, I would like to know that what skill sets do you feel are important for a casting director right. to have right. in order to be able to cast these enormous titles? The skills that we, the casting directors, need? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I tell you, I mean, I can't imagine that just anybody could do what you well, do. Well, you know, I don't want to act like I'm a superhero. Uh, but you but, are. but, well, you know, I think that any... I, it's funny, I recently talked a fair, a fair bit about this. I really think that those of us who get into casting, speaking for myself, I love audio. I've always been an audiophile. Audio is my jam. Music's my jam. I grew up with music. Yeah. You know, I was a musician. I DJ now. Like, I feel like there's a, a connection to audio and sounds that I have. Mm -hmm. And so I think really appreciating the kind of melody and delivery and musicality of VO yep. really helps. Yeah. I feel like when I do casting, you know, I feel like I'm making my own kind of VO mixtape. Really, I, I'm kind of sewing a mosaic or putting a quilt together. So because I love sounds and textures and I'm very mm -hmm. cognizant of how they're going to fit together, yeah. I feel like that's a big part of what I do is, is not just, hey, that's a great actor, great. How is that actor going to fit into the puzzle that I'm building? Yeah. So kind of, you know, somebody once asked me, don't you want to be like a film director at some day? And I'm like, no, because I like being a VO <laughs> DJ, man. Like I get to yeah. form this VO world. DJ. VO awesome. DJ. I love that. That's really what it is. When I, yeah. Right now I'm deep in World of Warcraft recording and I had to cast over 600 roles. And I just, it's really fun. It's like the world's biggest mixtape. So I really am kind of going through my huge spreadsheet and kind of going, who's going to fit for that orc, that creature, that troll? And you just kind of... You know, VO DJ, or it's like I've got the coolest coloring book in the world that I get to color. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to answer your question, I think, you know, really being tied into audio and sounds and what they mean and how they fit together and the flavors. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I think that's been, that's been part of my success is that music in general and, and audio in general is a big part of my life. Yeah. So I think that's certainly up. It doesn't mean you have to have that, yeah. but I certainly think it gives you kind of a head start into this world. Yeah, it's so cool because a lot of the people that we've talked to about you that you've had, uh, that you've directed on right. some of these huge titles have always, they all say, man, I've learned so oh. much from Andrea. And she's just like, because she mm -hmm. sees things in such a different way that-, that right. That's really sweet. Which is really cool. So so what you're saying right now right. coincides with what they say about oh, you and how yeah. you direct. That's and really you lovely. allow you know, us actors to be who we are. You yeah. don't you don't make us fit. You you right. say what do you bring to the table? Right. And how can that inform your character right. and and the bigger goal? That's so. really it's, I've been preaching a lot lately that I don't cast voices, I cast people. Mm -hmm. I really and I'm going to I'm going to preach right now, but I really think do that it. when I look for actors, I was I've been teaching a couple of beginning voice acting classes lately, and I always say, you know, voice is great. If you've got a great voice, awesome. That's awesome. But can you take that voice and channel your life story into that voice and your delivery? Because mm -hmm. I just had a long talk with somebody last week about when we direct, we collaborate with the actor. If I brought you in as actors, I want to know, Stacy, your your wins, your losses, your heartbreak, your tragedies, your joys, your I victories. I want to tell you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it because, but that's what you know. That's what makes the characters come to yes. life. We're going to write the words, sure, but when you can bring your own experiences of loss and heartbreak and happiness, you know, I was mm -hmm. just a conversation last week. We were talking about 
you know, we as humans, when we hear something in a line, we don't know what it is, but it gives us chills, yeah. right? We, because what we're hearing is a truth. Mm -hmm. And when I work with actors and we collaborate and I go, here's our crazy specs, here's our crazy world, here's our script, but I want you to bring you into it. Because when you bring your truth into it, that's when the players don't even really realize it, they get chills and we as humans mm -hmm. relate. Yep. And sometimes people say to me, is it hard bringing creatures and so forth to life? And I say no, because we're still chasing a base human emotion. Because we're still on this, all on this crazy journey called life together. And the more I can bring you, Chuck, and you, Stacy, into our world with your personal story, the more our story is going to be stronger. Wow. So I think that's why Overwatch and games that we do, mm -hmm. I've found people that are those characters who have brought their souls yes. into those characters. Yes. And when you do that, you get it right. Yes. So, uh, so to your point, I do I very much want the actor to embrace our role, embrace that we have, and just channel it through their story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Amen. Cool. Amen. You I mean, preach as much as you want, girl. I think, I mean, Overwatch has really just obliterated oh, yeah. stereotypes and it's cliches, crazy. and congratulations on thank that. You. And thank you for that thank because you. it was so needed. Right. Um, obviously, it's made an amazing impact right. on the culture of gaming and yes. just in general. What, um, why do you think that is? Well, it's crazy. You know, it's so weird. When we were doing this, I feel like, you know, sometimes people have asked me, was it a big plan and la la la, diversity, blah, blah, blah. And I love the fact that it wasn't. You know, I was recently talking to somebody saying, all we wanted to do is make a game that reflected what we see in the world. We weren't like, we're going to pioneer and make a game. To... It was never like that. Mm -hmm. We just all kind of dove in and wanted to make a game that felt real to us. Yeah. We had, and I remember the day we launched it at BlizzCon, we were all like, oh God, is anybody going to like it? Like there was so much fear because what if they think it's stupid? I mean, right. it's such a departure from what Blizzard does. Yes. Right. And so we didn't know, but all I know when I was working on it those early days is I want to, let's find the real voices. Let's find the real people. Let's, you know, diversity is a big thing now. And we, when we were first into it, we're, you know, when and if we can, let's find people again who are, who have some tie to whatever ethnicity we're doing yeah. to make the story more real. Yeah. You know, because um, somebody asked me recently about that. We could get, actors can do all kinds of accents. Yeah. But when you get somebody whose family heritage ties to our story, mm -hmm. then again, I'm going to repeat myself, you get that truth. So I think it, I think that we, we came at the right time, you know, and I think that we made it true and we tried not to be stereotypical and cliche and silly. Yeah. And I think that people, you know, it's interesting being in games as long as I have, you know, I personally am not into violent games and things of that nature. And when I've talked to other developers who make games like that, that's great. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I would have, be in conversations where they'd say, well, we're just making what people want, right? And cool, I'm sure they do. Mm -hmm. And I think that I feel that Blizzard, I feel grateful to work at a company that said, okay, let's try this. We're not sure if anybody's going to want it. Let's try it. Yeah. And we did. Yeah. And guess what? People yeah. are good people Incredible. and they want it and they resonate Incredible. with it. I mean, what a beautiful thing to put something out there oh my that says there's a better world. A better world. We all can contribute to it. And Absolutely. this is just, oh, it gives yeah. me chills. Yeah. I know. I this really so was cool. driven home to me when our, our game director, um, Ray Gresco was, we won an award, I forget what award it was, in Vegas, and he got on stage and he said, yeah, it's great that we're, we've got good sales and all that, but I love it that in these dark times, we can we can show the world, it's our, our, our version of a better future. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about, that we, Blizzard, and we, the world, and we, our player fan base, can come together and collectively make a better future. Even talking about it now, it yeah. makes me get weepy. Yeah. It's a big thing. Yeah. And yes. I'm not saying we're the only ones doing it. It's Lots huge. of game companies are trying, but I yeah. love that we get to be part of that dialogue and promote that kind of diversity and approach to mm. gaming. Yeah, yes. and it's so needed. It's yes. so sure. needed, and it really proves that we, especially right now, it's really great to get out there and go, guess what? We're all one people, we're all in one world, and mm -hmm. we're all in this crazy thing together. Mm -hmm. So you've been doing what you're doing now for, what, 15 years I've been plus? at Blizzard 10 years. I've been in the industry 18 years. 18 yeah. years. That's yeah. a long time yeah. to be doing anything. So that makes you a master. <laughs> but, and we know that you're the master of what yes. you do. But how did you get into a position where you started doing what it is that you do? So, Take us back. So crazy. Oftentimes people say to me, how do I get your job? And I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm a big believer in when life knocks on your door, you got to jump. If that door opens, you can't second guess. And I'll try to just give you the bullet point version, but I was working at an ad agency. Um, I mean, I say suicidal because I'm emo and goth and dramatic. I wouldn't really do that. But you know, we've all... A lot of us in this in industry, I love when I teach classes because a lot I find a lot of beginning voice actors, we hit that point in life where we're not happy mm -hmm. and we are going in the wrong direction. And yeah. I remember coming home from the ad agency, I was a media buyer, sitting in the backyard in my dark goth way, crying without sound, you know, very melodramatic. But my point is I just, my soul was dying. Mm 
So I randomly applied for a job as a production assistant at a game called Havas Interactive. I, I'm not, I didn't play games. I didn't even know what a production assistant mm. was, but it was in the audio and video department. And so at that point, I applied, and at that point, I had hot pink hair. My mother said, you're not going to get a job looking like that. <laughs> I kind of got the job because I look like that. Yeah. And I can talk a good game. Right. So um, that was at a small educational video game company, and uh, they were doing, like, learning software. That company had just bought Blizzard for $5 million. Wow. $5 million. They were Holy told it was a bad investment. That's they, like, they wow. own that's Aruba like the now. That's special No, I know. Right there. They own half of the continent. Yeah. These two wow. school teachers, they bought Blizzard. <clears throat> So I was the girl, I was an audio video girl. I got coffee, picked up dry cleaning, that's the typical thing. We did infomercials. So I did hair, makeup, set design, just little hokey pokey mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And then, um, and I got to kind of be around that world a bit. And then a company called Vivendi Universal Games bought Blizzard and Havas, and they built a recording studio in, in El Segundo. And at that point, rather than hiring a professional, they sent the girl to school to be a recording engineer like, there's adults that could do this better than me. Yeah. But they're not you. Uh, well, so the, so the girl was sent to a recording engineer school, if you will, mm. and I became a recording engineer. And that, you know, before that, I never thought about acting or directing or games or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I remember, you know, being a recording engineer, my early days and having actors come in and work with the director. I remember literally clearly turning my head because I felt what was going on with the actor and director was so intimate mm -hmm. and so personal and so real. And so being a recording engineer, working with many actors and many directors on many games, I fell in love with actors and directing. And, you know, as adults, when we're in school, we play in the sandbox, we color together. As right. adults, yep. we don't. Mm -hmm. And so when I got to be part of the formula of people playing and giving everything to each other, I became a junkie. Wow. And uh, so I, I absorbed every second of it. And then I started doing casting at Vivendi, became, kind of started running the studio. And... Uh, Long story short, then Blizzard, then Vivendi shut its doors. And Blizzard at that point had just gone Union. They didn't really know what that meant. They mm -hmm. had really only had World of Warcraft, uh, and they had Starcraft and Diablo, but this is, they are officially going Union. Mm -hmm. And so they literally called Vivendi and said, is that girl there that like <laughs> knows stuff? <laughs> that knows stuff. So I was like, yeah, so that girl is here and that girl is unemployed. Yeah. So, um, so I went over there, I helped them a little bit, dropped some paperwork off, and they took me to HR. And I'm like, why am I going to HR? Because, side note, I had a business making DJ bags and a fashion clothing line yeah. in the background that I thought was going to make me millions. Yeah. And I, we laughed because I almost didn't take the job. Like, no, but I want to make yeah. it. Oh, so. God. But I took the job, luckily, and they basically said, we just need you to start the VO department. Mm -hmm. They put me in a room, and, they had, and they're just like, so can you just do this make that happen and yeah. 10 years now and wow. i'm so glad i did because it was great to come in at a, a moment in history or blizzard they already had success in great games but to mm -hmm. go union and i remember starting at blizzard thinking I, on my first review i said look be, because at that point blizzard was kind of known but because they were non-union they weren't really as well known with the agents and mm -hmm. the industry right. yep. and my first review i recently found and i said i want to make sure that at one point someday when blizzard calls people are going to answer Right. Mm -hmm. And so not because we are great, but I think I've been working hard in the last 10 years to take care of actors, do things right, have a quality bar and just really embrace what we do in our process with all my heart. Yeah. So it's yes. nice 10 years later to look back and go, wow, they let me start the Blizzard VO department. And 10 years later, mm -hmm. we've done some good so stuff. So cool. Yeah. Well, you were just met and to do that. And your soul is obviously I love it. very happy Yeah. because yeah. you can feel that and you just know it. I mean, because everything is like, I mean, I love when I see like, oh, it's a Blizzard audition. Oh. I mean, it's like you, I get so excited yes. because it's you just know that there's a bar yes. that keep and you guys keep raising it. We try. You don't, you don't just settle. Yeah, we really try, and you know, I we and I think the thing is too, like I said, we really love the process. We love actors. We're trying to really establish. A, a, a quality level, a mm -hmm. way of working with actors. We're really trying to be the best we can be at all yeah. parts. Yeah. And I do love it, you know. All my other jobs were jobs. I've never had a job be in my DNA like Blizzard is. Mm -hmm. It's We always say Blizzard, I bleed Blizzard blue, because we give everything to the to our to yeah. our work, to our games, to our fans. Mm -hmm. It's I, it's literally in my cells. Yeah. And the fact that I have the privilege every day of getting to go to the studio and work with actors, I mean, I hate when I go to dinner parties and people go, they're like my friends or accounts yeah. or something. Right. I hate my job, and I'm like, 
Can you pass the potatoes? Because I don't have any, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm in bliss. I know. But thank you. I'm just <laughs> grateful, you know, because yeah. I feel like I, I, I found my tribe. I feel yeah. like those of us in this world, yeah. we yeah. found each other. Yeah. And I'm very grateful. That's Love so it. cool. You know what? I hear that there's people trying to get into the video game business just to meet you. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. <laughs> and I was just kidding. But, uh, so, so check this out. Um, obviously, you hear gazillions of auditions yes. whenever you're, you're casting. Mm. What? In, to you, what stands out in an audition? What's something right. that you really, really like, and maybe some some things that you don't, that you dislike? Right. Um, well, a, I've got to tell you that for all roles now, when we do open casting, we cast in uh, L.A., New York, and London for everything. So I have a lot of auditions coming <clears> through, <throat> and kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, and that is, I really am listening for a truth. You know, when I teach my classes, one of the main things I spend a lot of time on is talking about auditioning guidelines, and I know actors are crazy and busy. And sometimes they just plow through copy. And when you plow through it, you know, it's so hard for me because I'm trying to hear that you connect to my character somehow. Even if you're a, a mouthless space alien doing whatever in space, mm -hmm. I still want to hear some human emotion coming through. So I, I often threaten, it'd be great to teach it at class on auditions and play auditions, because if you heard what I heard, heard, you'd hear, flat, you know, getting through it, getting through it, getting yep. through it, and then somebody who's connected to something. And it's when actors take their time and let their give space for their personality to come through, yep. it pops. So that's what I'm looking for because even if your voice isn't exactly the, the what we're looking for, we can adjust the voice. We're happy to move around that. But if we find your soul in there, yeah. that's what we're going to capitalize mm -hmm. on. And then we can adjust the voice and post or do whatever. That is so important. It's so, yeah. so important. And that's why, again, Overwatch, I think, has been good because we've worked hard to find not just the character but the person who is the character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think a lot of times people, the auditions that I get, that was the second half, right? What bothers me? Well, yeah, yeah. Anything you that yeah. maybe you just don't like that turns you off. Uh, well, uh, uh, again, people just read it really fast. I know they're busy, but they don't yeah. take any time with it. Mm -hmm. And what people have to realize is when it's a video game, I'm not the final client. That my, Let's say I get 500 auditions, and I'm going to break that down to 15, and that's going to go to the game team. And they don't have my ears. They're, they don't have the patience to go, that's kind of good, but you know, if you're fast and you're not putting yourself into it, no, we're not going to really spend time with it. Right. right. So there's that. People who just dial it in, for lack of better terminology. Mm -hmm. Also, I've been preaching a lot lately, bad quality. I feel bad. Some actors are doing yeah. their best they can do, but the levels are too low, too high, blown out, one speaker. And you'd be surprised how many just bad audio files I get. Mm -hmm. And even if you're acting your heart out, if I can't hear you that well, yeah. and you wonder why you're not getting called back, yeah. You don't even know that you've got crap quality, yeah. and your agents mm -hmm. are too busy to QC it for you. Mm -hmm. Totally, that's becoming an increasing problem. That the the auditions themselves are not good quality. That pisses yeah, me off. I know, and they well. don't know. I feel bad. <laughs> that's a button for Chuck. That just pisses me off. As yeah. an engineer, because I this, I tell people all the time, it's like, I know. why if you're selling your voice and you're selling you, you, why already. are you using the cheapest, cheapest. stuff yeah. to show it off? Right. You know, it just mm -hmm. makes no sense whatsoever. Well, at the very, thank you for bringing that. Yeah, up. well, at the very least, I tell people. If you can't afford to bring a professional in, there's many people in this town that can do things with you, yeah. then send your file to 20 of your friends. Yeah. Have your friends listen and just get feedback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you could be doing everything you can and you're not booking gigs and something as small as like a, sh a crappy microphone is shutting you down. Yeah. Yeah. So send it to yeah. friends, yeah. you know? Yeah. But yeah, that really makes me crazy. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Us too. When you are working on a new project, which we're not going to ask sure. you about because you can't talk about it, but at what point do you enter into the process? Right. Well, you know, I've really worked hard with my teams to really establish. I've worked hard to establish a workflow with actors and agencies, but I've yeah. also worked hard to establish a workflow with our game teams. Mm -hmm. And for me, the earlier I can get on board, the better, because I feel like all of us, myself and the writers, really have to have a 360 degree understanding of the game, its themes, its tones, mm -hmm. what we're chasing, its philosophies to really understand what kind of pe people we're going to cast. So oftentimes I try to get in pretty early so I can help them think more about their characters because sometimes they're so caught up in gameplay and programming and this kind of stuff that it's easy to come to me and go, okay, great, I need a male 55 soldier gruff voice. Right. That means nothing to me. Mm -hmm. So I really have to sit with them and now they're so great because all teams I work with, we have this whole kind of kumbaya process for casting yeah. where they know when I come to them, I say, okay, great, soldier 50's gruff, that could be a million people. But one little thing that I even tell my students uh, and that I work with my game teams, I say, let's establish who our lead characters are. We, I feel like I need to see a 360 degree view of them and I want my game teams to as well. So I say things like, this is a, a very important step for me, character, soldier character. What's his biggest fear and what's his biggest dream? Mm. Because I heard Stephen Tobolowsky, you know that character actor, he said that, he said, even if I play butt crack plumber O2, 
his words, I need to know biggest fear, biggest dream, because if I don't, it's just going to be a cliche. Yeah. So I need to have anchor points to make my character real. Right. So now when you tell me this soldier, 50s male gruff, um, his biggest fear is to, you know, not protect his country, and biggest dream is to save his family, I don't know, mm -hmm. then suddenly he's a real person. Yeah. Suddenly there's points we can all relate to, and then when I cast, I can hear a bit of that coming through in the voice. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, I try to get in early, so even before the script is done, we can kind of flesh out, and so myself and the game team really can look at that character 360 and understand who he is as a person, yeah. not just a voice. Yeah. And when that. you're when you're casting a game, are are you involved with the specs of the character that you're looking for? I am in the sense of look, they're going to kind of come to me and give me the base beats. Right. But then I push not push back. Then I come back and go, "Great. Uh, that's awesome. I can look for that, but let's give me some other colors and flavors." Mm -hmm. I so I really sometimes depending on the game team, I have to work with them to kind of because they might not have a ha not might not have had time to think about the full thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of my world to bring to them. Great. I know you're busy. Let's have some coffee. Mm -hmm. I know you think this this but who is he? You know, where did right, he come right. from? Yeah. You know, my I have a directing mentor Judith Weston who's my OB1. Um, I studied theater directing with her for a while and she says, you know, your a look for your character's B side. The A side is what's in the script. Yeah. Great. But I work with the teams to go what's their B side? Who are they when they're mm -hmm. not in the scene? What's yeah. happening? Very good. You know, are they you know, do they still speak to their parents? Are they in love? Are they, you know, who are they? Because if I know who they are outside of the script, then I can find for you who they are when they're inside your script. Right. Wow, this is so deep. I'm so pretentious, I'm telling you. So this is fantastic. juicy. We love juicy. We I, like the gravy. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, when you, mm. um, I mean, there's obviously people watching all over the world. Sure. Um, what could you say to, to actors who want to get into video games? How do they need to really prepare themselves to be at the level sure. of a Blizzard game sure. and, and to be a part of that part of the industry? Well, the number one thing that I preach always every day is I really wish we could all start, sign a petition, start a movement that it wasn't called voice acting. Mm. It is acting. Acting, acting, act. I, I mean, I just want, do I need to make a t-shirt, armbands? What do we have to right. do? Yeah. Right. Because I think people underestimate how hard acting for video games is because I think when we see actors on camera or on stage, we see them acting, we're cognizant of their talent. Yeah. When they're behind the mic, you don't, people don't see the acting. Somebody recently said to me by accident, bless him, oh, I think I'm gonna get into voice acting because it's the easiest. Mm. After I had an aneurysm and my <laughs> brain shut down, and it, he doesn't know, right. I said, well, I hate to you know, crush your dreams, yeah. uh, but it is the hardest form of acting, I would argue, because there's no scene partner, wardrobe, hair, makeup, nothing. And for video games, as you guys know, you will, you'll probably never see your script ahead of time, right. ever. Or another actor. Or another actor. Yeah. And also, oftentimes, if you're a lead character, you'll know what you're coming in for. But if you're not, you're going to have no clue what you're even coming in for. Right. Hence, the stronger capital A acting, the more successful you're going to be. Because, going back to what we were saying earlier, not only are you going to have to come in and be you know, a, gr a gruff, textured orc with a British accent limping because he's injured, but while you're doing that, I need your life story to bleed through as well. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a five-star, epic, hardcore actor, because you're going to need it. And on top of that, the second ingredient that I think people don't realize, I feel like the Fred Tatashores, the Jess Harnells of the world, the Dee Bakers, when I cast them, they show up with a toolbox mm -hmm. or a cram box full of possibility. Okay, they've got accents, textures, sounds, archetype, ages. You know, and I feel like... I give them a character and they go, cool, let me open the toolbox up and they, I'll get the wrench, I'm gonna get the screwdriver, I've got a little bit of putty, I'm gonna make this character for you. Mm -hmm. So the actors that I bring in are the ones that have like overflowing toolboxes, a million crayons, and they just have, you know, everything they need to, to rock it. Yeah. yeah. Because when you work in video games and I'm gonna challenge you with crazy shit you never thought possible. Yeah. Because even if you're the lead, I can still get two more roles from you. Mm -hmm. Right. You're gonna need all those crayons. I mean, I think rarely am I going to cast you to be a, 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 a human male or human female. That's rare. Yeah. In my yeah. world, that's rare. Yeah. So the actors I, that I always work with who are dear to my heart, who come in all the time, are amazing actors who have an endless imagination. And with those two together, we can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you hear that? <laughs> you get your toolbox ready yeah. out there. You have mm -hmm. to. Yeah. You know, I even say, you know, when I'm at the DMV or the post office or raging or wherever I'm at angry, um, <laughs> I'm always listening to accents. My new favorite thing are Uber drivers. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. not just their accent, but their life stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Russian track taxi drivers in New York oh. are to die for. Uh, yes. But I I, and I'm, yeah, you know, I as a director, I have to have my own toolbox because in case you're missing a wrench or a screwdriver, right. I've got, I go, okay, you're missing it. Let me look in my toolbox. 
I've got these colors, what do you think? Mm -hmm. So wherever I go, I'm absorbing people and stories and archetypes and concepts so that we have all these toys to play with. Yeah. Speaking, just a quick quick little side. Stacy and I were in New York, <laughs> we were gonna go see yes. Prince oh, um, in concert, and we were, we were in a cab. Or, or with a driver, and he yeah. was Russian. And oh, we told him, hey man, we're in a little bit of a rush. And he goes, okay. So we're there, and he's at a red light, and he looks back at us. Well, and, and first goes, of all, no. I, I'm from New York, so I'm used to this. Yes. Chuck is like, oh, what's happening? Oh. He looks and he's back, and like, he goes, I go. And he goes through <gasps> yeah. the light and starts driving like a maniac. And oh. I'm like, oh my God, we're going to die. Like, just close your eyes, look at the lights. He's like, I was like, just don't think about oh, it. He's I love like, it. oh, God. See, we're what an amazing yes. Russian Draenei yes. warrior he would make in World of Warcraft. Completely. Oh, yes. Yeah, because he, he was just like, I go. I hope you tipped him generously. We did. He was awesome. But again, there's personalities of people you meet. Yeah. That's just fodder, that's cannon fodder. Yes. Ooh, we can yes. do so much with him. Absolutely, Definitely. for sure. Well, that concludes part one with our awesome friend, Andrea Toyas, Blizzard Entertainment. Yes. And we're going to be back next week with part two, so check it out. Yes, we will. And follow all of us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thanks for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for 